All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Build and Drive, where we are replacing this N52 engine. In the previous episodes, we rebuilt it. This is a burnt engine from an E60, uh, same year, year make and model. We put in new rings, uh, new valve stem seals, a bunch of other stuff, new gaskets, of course. Um, if you're interested in that, you can. Maybe I'll make a playlist video down below. You can go click on that. Bunch of tutorials. And we finally got this sucker back in here. It was very challenging. The E60 engines have a different motor mount, but luckily I had my old engine, so we're able to put that in. Word of advice is to have two people putting in the engine from the front, one person underneath moving stuff out of the way. We didn't realize that uh, we were kind of hitting on some stuff underneath the car. And I don't think we broke anything, but uh, everything looks okay, thankfully. So first things first, I'm just gonna clean all of this up. We were kinda in a rush to get the engine in yesterday. There's the old burnt up engine, which uh, we may take apart. If you're interested in that, subscribe. The engine was burning one liter every 300 kilometers. Can you imagine? That was insane. Um, it was burning so quickly that um, the digital oil gauge couldn't keep up. I just knew that every 300k I needed to put in another liter. So guess in the comments below, what do you think was wrong with this? Was it valve stem seals? Was it piston rings? Um, and maybe we'll go through this motor later in another video. So don't forget to check that out. We need to put all this stuff back on it today, hopefully. And... Uh, yeah, I don't want things to get lost. So I'm just gonna quickly clean up. So everything's cleaned up. So now we're gonna get back to putting this engine back together. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clean up these um, shift fork linkages. This, these link to the top of the transmission. Just clean them up. Um, we'll get the grease out. I have this multi-purpose grease. Um, we'll get under the car, we'll grease them up, and we'll put them back in. And then we'll try and do the drive shaft. Yeah, then we'll try and do the drive shaft and some other bits around the transmission. So let's get to it. So now that the shifter's on, we're gonna reattach the exhaust. Um, originally, I thought you could reuse the um, exhaust bolts because they're like a stud and they're kind of hammered into the exhaust itself. Here's an example. Do you see how that bit goes in the exhaust on the engine side and then you have a bolt that goes on the threads on the other side? Well, I had to cut that off. So I went to the hardware store and bought new bolts. I think these are an M8 8x40 or 8x50, but um, originally I thought I could just buy the bolts on the end because I knew I was going to wreck them just by looking at them, but then I had to cut the whole bolt off. So uh, this is the part number. There's no BMW part number there, but uh, maybe I'll put it on the screen now. That's the bolt. Um, these are copper bolts. I guess they seize last which i don't believe it but whatever and then i got a new gasket now the original gasket that came off of it seems to be like a almost like a too thick piece and then a thinner piece on the other side gasket it, it seems to be i mean i would reuse that that looks to be in pretty good condition but i bought these two other ones they seem to be quite a bit thinner uh than than this one so I don't know, it's only a couple bucks for this stuff, so I'll just put the new stuff on. I recommend on the bolts, you put some ceramic paste on it. This is good up to 1400 degrees, and it'll allow you to, you know, put some on here, on this side, and of course on the threads, and it'll allow you to get your bolts off of your exhaust again. I did throw some paint on there just so that uh, it doesn't corrode. This is just galvanized steel, I guess. Anyway, let's get this on.
Okay, let go. Okay, let go. Can you pump the clutch? Does it feel better? Does it feel normal? Okay, one more time. Can you push the clutch? All right, that looks clear. So, double check your exhaust. Let's tighten up. Shift linkage, front and back, your uh, drive shaft bolts, transmission mounts, um, the mount for your uh, exhaust, the slave cylinder, clutch safe cylinder, the mounts for your um, oxygen sensors, make sure everything's plugged in, make sure the ground's plugged in, the plastic cover's back on. And the exhaust is bolted up. So I think that's everything for underneath the car. So now we can finally move to the top. All right. So I think plan of attack for right now is I want to put the electronics back together and just have those all squared away before we do anything else. Cause then we can like close that up and forget about it. Um, and then we'll work, we'll work on buttoning up all the rest of this stuff. So, so I'm going to approach this bit by bit. This piece has these two connections. Just push on it there. That pulls out and that slots in somehow. And because of the way that the, the wires go, and there's an arrow there that says go in that way, so we're gonna push it in that way. And then we're gonna replace this. Come on. Oh, it's the wrong way. Should go in like that. We don't want it to go in all the way. And then, damn it, I twisted this up. So what I aim to do first is try to plug in these large connectors into the computer. And then the rest can slot into place afterward. So I'm assuming this one goes onto here. Somehow. <laughs> So if you've been struggling with this like I have, what you need to do is <clears throat> open this up all the way until you can see that these slots are open. You see how they're closed there and now they're open? Once it's open, you can then, oops, just like that. Challenge is you need to get this out of the way. Okay, so you do need to take the computer actually out a little bit. Okay, let's do this again. And then you need to press this closed. and it will sink in. And then you can put that back in. So now those two giant plugs are in, and now we can reattach stuff. For example, this guy it used to be right there, I think. Okay, so I've taken another look at this. If you look at the colors, we have red, blue, red, blue, green, green, black, a two prone black, a three prone black. That's a, and that doesn't count. So we seem to be missing one plug, but that's okay. We're gonna get started with this. What I need to do is actually pull these out again, because the red and the blue I believe, go to the other side. So, 
For example, red goes into red. Blue, it's a one-way plug. Yeah, it's a one-way plug. Blue goes into blue. And then I believe this one lived right here. And this one lived right here. And then I'm assuming that these two, I mean, they gotta live over here somewhere. Right? So I plugged in this red cable, it seems to run power to stuff. Plugged in this green cable. Um, it seems to want to live right there. Maybe right here. Put it there. I don't know where this one goes. Was this one always unplugged? A few minutes later. So I'm just watching myself here, I'm so glad. I'm so glad I made this video because now I can put it all back together really easily. So we have red, we have blue. This one wasn't plugged into anything. It's a red, brown, and purple and white wires. The actual red um, power plugs in down here. We have a relay with a 40 amp on it. I think it's another relay with a five amp on it. And then we have our green plug. And like, that's it. That's everything on your engine management box. So that wasn't that hard. Just had to have the correct wiring schematic to be able to do that. So now we'll shove it back together. All right, so I dug into my awesome archeological videos. I almost put this there, which is good because that's, that's not good. I mean, that's a ground and that doesn't fit on there. That fits over here, hidden next to the windshield washer filler. This is the one that goes here. This is the positive. It runs over to your alternator and stuff. So we're gonna tighten those down. This is your ground. Which I'm gonna route this behind this. That feels better. So big positive, small positive, ground. And the other ground also went to here before. So I'm gonna hook that up as well. Okay, so now I'm just gonna start hooking stuff back up. Things that I see. For example, this AC line. It goes there and down here. Again, guys, always good practice to uh, put the bolts back where they were so that you can find them again. So I'll tighten these up. These are a T45. Let's reattach this AC line. longer than a few minutes later.
So this is a Molly part, 752-2928. This is some random brand. Now, I'm fairly certain that this is, this died in my car, but it looks like it didn't. So I'm not too sure what to do. Normally you can test these with um, some software, but I thought it would be loose or something, but it's not. It says there's an error on here, but I don't know what to believe. So as you can see from all the oil in here, either the CCV is bad, But I think it's the pipe that's bad and not the CCV. As you can kind of hear, this should have a check ball in it. You can kind of hear it rattle, but it looks like this is not functioning correctly. So what happens is it sucks oil through the, um, through the oil pan into the crankcase. Sorry, it sucks oil from the crankcase into the intake and it burns it off and that's why you get all this oil in there and sometimes you know these things go bad so I have to order a new one of these the check ball should be uh, working correctly and it's not I guess um, two years ago when I replaced the CCV that did not happen so that is probably four years old I don't know why it's going bad now but um, I don't know if I should replace this as well as the hose or just this. You know, this I'm trying to do this on a budget and it is getting pretty expensive. So yeah, if you guys want to support the channel, you just give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if any of this stuff is helpful or useful to you. So I guess I have to bite the bullet. Maybe I'll order another one of these. I don't know how to test these CCV valves. Yeah, but uh, we'll see. Well, now since I'm waiting for that... Uh lower ccv pipe um to come in i just ordered it and i also ordered a gasket for here on the ac line actually i'm going to go into work and see if they have one if they don't then i'll order it it's freaking like two dollars but six dollars shipping so what i'm going to do right now is just start to assemble the front end um remember this piece goes right here Okay, so all we're gonna do is lift it up okay. like this, and these four holes are gonna go on these four holes. Okay. That's it. Where should I lift from? The front. So like the idiot that I am, I closed the hood and I haven't hooked up the hood latch yet. So I can't open the hood again. What you can do is right here, the hood latch is right here. Luckily it's on a cable. Normally it's attached up in here, but luckily it's down here right now. You can open this up and then pull really hard on this cable. So I'm going to get some uh, pliers. So I've got it connected and we're going to pull. Yes. All right. So I'm just going to let this down and not lock it. There we go. Okay, so we're going to put back on the intake and you want to make sure that you get your wires all lined up and out of the way. So going from right to left. Um, of course, get your fuel line out of the way because that's going to connect back here. But this red rubber small two prong one is for the back of the CCV right here. This one with the green rubber is, I thought it was for this, but it's not. I actually don't know where that goes. 
Interesting. So this green one went under the starter. There's a little sensor here. I'm not too sure what it's for, but it's in. I'm gonna take right, off that sensor. Let's redo there. this. It's a T25 Torx because when you put it there at the back, it doesn't really fit, so take it off. No. Est-ce qu'on peut enlever ça? Et on, au dessus alors, ça marche plus? <rire> on peut enlever ça. Ça c'est bon, bro. Bon. Encore? Ouais. C'est bon. bon. Vas-y. Yeah. C'est cool. bon. Oui. On a la chance que on pouvait les enlever. Les enlever. That was good. Man, c'est du bordel, mais. <laughs> so, if I am to get this piece on Monday, what I'll have to do is unhook the mount for this and unplug this, and I'll probably lose some water. But then, uh, you know, just put it back in, I guess. No, ça va pas. All right, so yesterday, working on reconnecting stuff, reconnected the, I guess it's a wire that goes to the horns, wires that go to the airbag sensor or something like that. Um, we got our fan back in, should be in, and you can tell by checking the, the clip right here on the right, make sure it's in the grooves there on the left. We're going to, I'm just gonna reattach these um, AC lines for now, just so that they're closed off and not getting any more dirt in them, but we're gonna replace the desiccant filter later, refill the AC at a shop. So I'm just gonna put these back in for now. See, I have the bolts conveniently placed there. Um, we need to plug back in the wire for the fan. We need to plug back in the wire for I'm gonna assume that's a temperature sensor for the coolant. We plugged in the headlamps. I think I'm gonna get working on this. This is for the uh, reservoir right here. We're gonna put the intake back on um, and all its hoses, hook up the map sensor, and then, uh, yeah, make sure everything's hooked up. Make sure these AC lines are hooked up again down here even though we're not gonna use them yet. Uh, yeah, fill it with water, fill it with oil, um, put the bumper back on, hook the fog lights back up, and just go over everything, make sure there's no leaks. Fill up the power steering fluid as well, and we'll have to purge that later when the car started. And yeah, just button everything up, so let's get to it. Just replace
replacing an air filter. Those look about the same. This one was last changed in 2011. So maybe it's good that I'm changing it. This one doesn't have a date on it. Hmm. Anyway, that's the part number. Um, I have a different setup than most people. This is a European style intake. What you have to do is on here, you have to push these tabs in. As you can see, there's a little arrow there. Well, I didn't really understand the arrow. But, uh, what you do is, to unlock it, what you're gonna do is push in the tabs, maybe with your fingers, and get a pry bar back here and push it that way. And then it will kind of pop out, and you'll be able to take it out. And the same is for reassembly. Just get it around the grooves there and then push this in and it should be locked into place. And you're good to go. And we'll put this back in the car. So here's a quite interesting issue. Um, I'm putting together the top cowl piece and running all the, the lines for the electrical stuff. And no matter what I do, look how far I'm off on my power cable that goes from this distribution box down to the starter and then over to the alternator. I'm off by that much. Like this won't mount, as you can see, this won't mount, like this red piece should be up here. Isn't that crazy? How am I off by, you know, four or five inches? Um, down at the starter, everything looks right. It's, you only have one connection, it's a Y connection. Down there, I can't really see. I mean, it's wired up properly. And the routing of the cable can only go one way. So I'm going to undo this, take the cowl off, take this piece off, and try to figure out what's going on. Otherwise, I'm in a bit of trouble because I need to start the car today. See, it's kind of routed around the intake. That's one thing to notice. Make sure you route your wires correctly. Thought I did, but I'm off. So here's the wire. I mean, that intake goes right to here. So either this wire comes down and comes out here or what? Let's try that. One hour later. All right, everybody. Well, everything's attached. This, this red cable is so finicky to route. It has a very, very specific routing pattern. Otherwise, it won't fit. Um, yeah, you'll want to play with that. It has to go underneath all these cables. I mean, it has to be in front of that lower um, CCV pipe. I had it going around. Anyway, that was crazy. I had to redo the entire intake. Um, so now I think we're going to put in fluids and we're going to run the, we're going to run the uh, water pump for 10 minutes to get this thing full. So I think that's what we're gonna do next. And then we're gonna button up all the little pieces. And hopefully, 
this thing doesn't throw any codes at us, we're going to go for a test drive. So this is the part of no return. Well, not no return, but hopefully everything's done up. I've kind of checked everything and everything seems to be okay. Everything's plugged in, everything's tight. Um, yeah. So I actually forgot there are a bunch of bolts. I think that go in here. Don't really remember which one is for where. But there's one that goes right here. And one on the other side as well. And then I'm gonna spend some time lining this back up. Just have to undo these bolts and wiggle this around. Or maybe play with this a little bit just to, to get that nice clean finish again. Yeah, same on this side. Four, two, and two. Four, two, and two. All right, so the rest of those bolts go here. We got coolant, we got oil, we got power steering fluid. Man, this doesn't work. Okay, take two. Oh, oh, wow, there's so much smoke coming up with that. This sucks. So, tune in for the next episode.